Hey, it's JP here from the Slant of the Lands, and we're downtown in Los Angeles. We came down with no reflector, no strobes, and we're gonna show you how to get great light using the reflection from the sky, in the shade, in the shadows. It gives us beautiful light if you set the person up correctly. Jen Lee is here with me. We're gonna take thousands of images here today, and then we're gonna sort them with Aftershoot, which is an AI engine driven program that will cull your images quickly so we can see the best ones and sort fast, and then not have to spend hours sorting through the images. It'll do it for us. So let's get started and see what we got. So when I got up this morning, we shot downtown last night, I wanted to see if this Aftershoot AI culling process could sort 7,000 images for me. I got up this morning, I looked at what it did, I was very pleased with what I saw. We're gonna get back to the lighting and showing you how to use that open sky to light people's faces. But first off, let's, let's look at how this AI was able to sort 7,000 images. That's a tremendous amount of workload to have to go through. It takes a lot of time. I wanna show you how it really helped me to get through these images and to be able to get kind of it narrowed down to exactly where I wanted it to be. First off, I, I broke it into a couple of folders. I put a folder of 2,000 images. In that folder of 2,000 images, when I looked at it this morning, so I have here 469 images that have been selected. It's put, uh, after shoot has put these into stacks, like here's a stack of uh, five, and this stack of five, it's saying this is the best one, and here's four others, actually it's a stack of six. This is the best one, and here's five others that uh, we think are, that were in the stack. And so I looked at this and I thought, you know what, I I'm gonna have to look at each one of these and make sure that I it got the right one. So I started doing that, and I would use the period here to just go through the images in the group, and I'd go back and forth going, you know what, I'm pretty pleased. I do love the fact that it brings this up here in the corner. If I double click on this, I get this large view. I can see the important face, it's called key faces. I see the important face in every image. I can see if it's sharp, if she's blinking, and of course the one they chose, she is sharp, she's not blinking. So seeing that face is really helpful for me. Um, if I use the period and the uh, comma, I can just go through, there's each of the faces. I see a nice large view here. I see her face large, so it's like it's punched in. I see those separate from each other. Now if I use my arrows down here, I just jump to the next group. And this group has uh, five images. And I can either sort, 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 sort. And I can start to get a pretty fast process where I'm going, okay, that's a single image. I like it, I'm gonna leave it. I got three images here, yep goes back and forth, I pick the best one. I can just go through this very quickly and see if I like what it's selected. You know, one thing, I wanna show you this really fast. I don't know why this is so, I, went, I did a photograph of my family at a family reunion. And this was insane because I've done this many, many, many times. I've got 50 people, 50 plus people here. And it brings up every key face. So if I look at this stack, there's nine images in this stack. And I'm looking at my key image right here, the best one. There's my key image in this group. Over here is every single face. And I can see in just one second that everybody looks good. It was so fast to go through this and find the, the perfect images that it made it incredibly worthwhile. I've never had a, a software that will give you that kind of option. Uh, it just gave me complete control to see exactly what everyone looks like. If you don't want to work with 430 images, which I don't, you just got to go through that process. Um, after shoot has culled it down to 400, now you just have to go through the process of selecting your final selects. So once you've got your selects down to the number you want, you just simply save down here, or in this case, you can export. Now you can edit in after shoot, or you can export to one of the major softwares like Lightroom or Capture One to do your editing there. Or you can save them to a folder. You can move all of your selects into a folder and then you can work with that folder from there. So we'll talk more about editing in another video, but just know you have the ability to move it into a software you're used to or you can uh, edit in Aftershoot. All right, let's get to some lighting. Talk about that open sky lighting. So this is the perfect situation where you're looking and working into the open sky. But what we've got here is just really a phenomenon that I love, and that is that I have a building that's reflecting light back into the shadows here. 
So look at the hard light on uh, Genly's face. I mean, there's, there's directional light there, but it's not the sun. It's a bounce off from that building, which means I can get a great shot of her. That building's in the, in the shadows back there. I see a deep blue sky behind her. It just looks really, it almost looks like it's strobe lit. It has a beautiful look and it's really kind of edgy and fun. And so we're gonna shoot a bunch of these. It's a great place. So this is the light bouncing off a building into the shadows. You can see it on the ground. You can see all this light on the ground. That's from that bounce light off that building. So I'll shoot some there and then I'm gonna move over just into the shade and just show you what it looks like when it's just the open blue on her face. Take a look at that. So we're looking for that open sky to light our model. So one thing I'm doing here that makes this work is I'm getting her in this position where she has really a beautiful butterfly light on her face or she's getting a nice Rembrandt. That light is high enough that when she turns, you get that little loop light to the side and get a beautiful Rembrandt on her face. So I can turn her and look directly into that sky that way and look at that. That's just a beautiful light, but it's all from that bounce light off the building across the street. This works a lot better when you get down low and you look into the blue sky because it simplifies the background. You get rid of all that foliage and everything back there and it just looks beautiful. So I'm going to get low. So it generally just moves beautifully. It's just so fun to watch. I'm using that building in the background as kind of a balance item, but looking into the simplicity of the blue sky. Oh, that's wonderful. So with after shoot, culling this is gonna be much easier because every time I change a position with Genly here, it's gonna make that a group. Not an outfit, not a, not a location, but every time I get into a new kind of uh, framing, it's automatically, because of the AI, gonna turn that into a group, and then it's gonna select the best image. Once it's in focus, one that her eyes are open, it's gonna choose the two or three uh, best images. I may ask it to choose the four or five. I can decide how many I want to choose from each group. It may have a group of just one, May then do a next group of eight, then a group of four, then a group of five. And it's gonna sort through there and give me the best from each one of those groups. Now I can quickly go through and make my selects and it just makes that end process so much faster. I'm shooting hundreds of images here today, so it's gonna make that a lot easier. So I have her now dead in the shade. All I have is this blue sky back here that's lighting her face. I see a highlight on her face, but it is very subtle. I'm gonna have that really backlit uh, building behind her so it's gonna look fairly nice. I've got a nice blue sky in the front, but it's not gonna have the highlight that we got with the bounce light off that building. But let's see what we got here. So you get a very different look. Uh, her face is not as bright. The building in the background is kind of uh, blown out a little bit. So it's a different look, but it's very interesting. We're using that sky to brighten her face. So I love shooting a silhouette. I'm shooting towards the bright light of the sky. That bright light of the sky is going to give me a, a silhouette of her. If I expose for the sky, it'll be very blue, but silhouette. If I expose for her face, then it's gonna to start to be very white. So I'm gonna flip around now and try to use the brightness of that sky back there as light on her face and see what that looks like. So I'm at 2.8 on 180 millimeters, and that background is falling way out of focus, but I've got generally facing the sky where the sun is going down. Not direct sun, direct sun isn't hitting her, but it's the sky back there. The sky is very bright. The sky has given us beautiful light on her face. The skin just looks beautiful. We get that butterfly under her nose, great cheek. I mean, it's just a beautiful light from here. So I've turned her towards the bright side. This is, this is west where the sun's going down and that bright sun's gonna light her face. So that bright sky is gonna light her face. So you can see that this is working. Look in her eyes. You see the sky, you see the highlight in her eyes. When I look at it, it's just beautiful in her eyes. You see that highlight, that, that's from the sky behind us. So beautiful. So I've been shooting with this 180 millimeter lens at, at 2.8, it's beautiful. But I'm gonna go to a wide lens. I'm gonna go to this Tamron 20 to a 40. I'm gonna try to lay on the ground and look straight up at the buildings and some of the things around us here and just see what that looks like. I think it'll look fabulous. Those long striped pants, uh, Jim Lee's long legs, I mean, it's just all gonna look good. So we're gonna go that 20 to 40.
So this is a perfect example of using the, the sky, or in this case, it's the sky and a building across the street. That building across the street is like a large reflector. The sun is still on that building. It's bouncing light in on her face, and it's beautiful. We can work in this uh, shade for a long, long time just because we're getting the reflection from that building behind us. So it just gives us beautiful light. Even after the sun comes off from that building, we'll get the sky up here is the bright spot. We're looking towards the west a little bit. It's gonna give us really bright light on her face, and that's gonna give us an opportunity to work in here for a long time. So it's a gorgeous way to work. Part about what makes this concept work is that I have the person in the shade, but I'm facing them towards what I would call the hot spot or the bright place in the sky. That's usually the direction the sun is either coming up or going down. I don't want direct sun on them, but I want the highlight from the sky to bounce light in on their face. So if I just get them in the shade and there's a bright sky out to my right, or if there's a building that's reflecting on to my right, that's gonna bounce light in and make, give me a beautiful light. Then I have to expose for the face. I'm gonna open my exposure up. I usually shoot these in manual so that I can open that exposure up and expose to the face and let the background be a little bit brighter than I normally would, but it'll give me a beautiful image, gives you beautiful light on the face and you can shoot all day long using this principle. Find the shade, look for that bright bounce light from the sky and expose for the face and then shoot away. What you wanna do to make this work is not face the dark sky like I am right now, but just move your model around look towards that dark background, and now the bright light of the sky, the buildings that are in the sun will reflect light back on my face and give you a beautiful light. Beautiful light on the face, now you're exposed, when you're exposed to the face, the background gets darker, and it gives you a really beautiful looking light. So keep your model face towards the light, and it looks great. If you come over here, it looks dark and not interesting. Over here, bright. So this is the perfect situation. It's dark behind Jen Lee. She's just on the edge so that the light from the sky and from around the buildings here is lighting her face. It just gives you the perfect juxtaposition because it's lighting her face, but the background's falling dark. It's a perfect situation. Like I say, it's the same as at a doorway when there's bright sunlight or even like late in the day like now where there's just light in the sky, dark background behind her gives you a beautiful light. All right, so we got one more outfit to shoot. We're gonna get out here and shoot down in the alleys and some things, so it's kind of a more grungy look. Let's get out there and see what we got. It's getting dark, we gotta go. So the sun's gone down now, and we don't have any really glow in the sky any longer. We're lighting a, a Jen Lee's face with the street lights, but I want to shoot some, it's fun, it's kind of gritty, it looks interesting, and Murdy, our dog, is barking, so it must be time to go home. So we're gonna shoot a few, then back to the studio, we're gonna get into uh, after shoot. So we've been shooting for several hours. We're done now. So Jen Lee, thank you very much. You did a great job. Let's get back to the studio. I'm so glad we're using After Shoot because it has that AI sorting the images for us. It's gonna go through this really quick. We shot a lot of images. I'm glad we're gonna have that speed to sort through them. So let's get back to the studio. I went through a process of setting up the AI so that it would make selections that would kind of narrow this down a little more for me. And if I look at this, I go back here to, uh, to my albums. This is one I did, it's a little smaller. I'll just show you how I did this really quickly. I'm gonna restart the calling, and it allows me to come into, this is the menu where you make your decisions. So I'm gonna do an automated AI calling. I made this kind of standard for about the amount of selected photos. In some ways I could have done few, which may, would have meant that it's going to give you less selected images, but I kept it 
standard uh, allows me to have uh, one per stack and it's going to show me uh, quite a few. This makes your groups. Um, I like bigger groups because I shoot in burst mode a lot and so that burst mode is going to allow me to uh, see all those images that are pretty similar and it's going to select the best one for me. You can go large which is big. When I say groups it puts them in stacks. That stack process is really good. Blurry, I was very strict about blurry photos. I didn't, I didn't want anything blurry. I want things very sharp. I mean, if you're doing something that is really kind of, uh, you know, motion driven, you would want this to be less strict. And then of course, closed eyes are important to me. And you just uh, start the culling. And after it goes to that culling, it'll give you the stacks of images that are similar and the one that it thinks is the best. All right, so now at this point, I have my quick filters here. I see that I have uh, 460 images. If I want to, I can go straight down and I can just look at these images and put them as a three if I don't want them, get them out of my uh, selects. Um, you can certainly go through here and I can look uh, back and forth between the ones that I liked. You see the key faces. Um, I mean, it's just, it makes us a much quicker way to be able to go through all the images. You know, I think this is what AI is meant for. I think it's really a super good application because it allows me to make decisions about images and to be able to call the images. I mean, when you send your images off to another person, they're making decisions and those decisions are based on the criteria you've discussed with them or uh, what they've learned in the past. Well, AI has the ability to do that same thing. I think this will even become more defined in the future as they add more uh, ways to kind of uh, work on the algorithm and to make it more specific. I think that'll be interesting to see as it uh, grows. But right now I'm very pleased with what I've got. All right, so let's wrap this up. I had a great time shooting downtown. Love that open light look on people's faces. It's a beautiful light. It was so easy and just turnkey to cull using after shoot. It made that whole end process, even though we'd shot so many images, just a very easy process, saved us a lot of time. I think as an AI process, this is what AI should be doing and it really makes for a great way to save you time and to get through that process. If you're shooting weddings and portraits, you've got a workload that is overwhelming when it comes to calling images and making decisions and getting things out to your clients. This is gonna speed that up for you and make that much easier. It certainly is for me. So if you wanna get some other lessons on this kind of thing, check out these lessons, but I hope you enjoyed this. AI is the future and after shoot is there. So keep those cameras rolling, keep on clicking.